This book is called Animals in Winter, and it's written by Henrietta Bancroft and Richard G. Van Gelder, and it's illustrated by Helen K. Davey. I think it's pretty fascinating to learn what animals do in the winter. The days grow short, the nights grow long. It is getting colder. Winter is coming. Leaves have fallen from the trees. There are no berries on the bushes. Insects are gone. The grass is dead and brown. Birds and other animals are getting ready for winter. Some of the birds will fly south. Bluebirds and orioles go toward the south. They go where it is warm and sunny and where there is food for them to eat. When spring comes, the birds will make the long journey back north. They migrate. Can you say migrate? That's when the animals travel to a warmer place for winter. Some butterflies migrate too. That is what the monarch butterflies do. They gather in a tree by the hundreds before cold weather comes. They stay in the tree all night. In the morning, they fly towards their winter homes in the south. Many bats fly south too, but some bats stay in the north all winter. When the weather gets cold, they go to a cave. There is no wind or snow in the cave. The bats sleep there all winter. They do not eat. They live on fat stored inside them. They do not move. They hardly breathe. They sleep, sleep, sleep. They hibernate. Can you say hibernate? That's when the animal sleeps all winter. Woodchucks hibernate too. When fall comes, a woodchuck eats and eats and eats. He eats grass, twigs, and leaves. He grows fat. When it gets cold, the woodchuck Chuck crawls into his long tunnel and goes to sleep. So here's a secret entrance on the top of the ground. It's a burrow with tunnels underneath the ground so then he can go down, he or she, and then it has little rooms like this is a sleeping chamber. There's even a toilet chamber because they like to be clean and have it separate from where they're sleeping. And over here it says a tunnel drops and narrows to keep out the enemies. So here's the main entrance, and here's a mound, or a sun porch, or a watchtower. So they can come up onto their mound and kind of look out around and see if any other creatures are coming towards their home. Does he sleep for a day? Longer than that. Does he sleep for a week? Longer than that, a month, even longer. A woodchuck can sleep as long as four months. So you can see the woodchuck is sleeping in December when the weather looks like this. January, it's snowy. February, it's even snowier. And then March, the snow is starting to melt. The woodchuck seems hardly alive. He breathes very slowly. His heart beats slowly. He sleeps, sleeps, sleeps. He hibernates. Some animals do not have to hibernate. They gather food and save it for the winter. That is what the pika does. A pika looks like a rabbit, but with round ears. Pikas live in high mountains where winters are long and cold. They eat grass. In the summer, they cut more grass than they can eat. They spread the grass on flat stones. The hot sun dries it. That's pretty smart. By the end of summer, a pika may have gathered 50 pounds of grass. She hides it under rocks. In winter, she eats the dry grass. It keeps her alive. Squirrels gather food too and save it for winter. They dig holes in the ground. They bury hickory nuts and acorns. When winter comes, they dig them up and eat them. Sometimes squirrels forget where they bury the nuts. Trees may grow from the nuts that squirrels forget. 
Some animals do not get ready for winter at all. They do not store food. They do not hibernate. They do not migrate. They must hunt for food all winter long. There are mice that must hunt all winter for seeds and goldenrod asters of, of goldenrod asters and other wild plants. Sometimes they eat farmers' corn, oats, and wheat. Deer must dig in the snow for dried leaves, plants, and moss. When the snow is deep, they must eat the twigs, buds, and bark of trees. The rabbit must hunt under the snow for bits of grass and plants. When the snow is deep, he too eats the buds and bark of bushes so he can stay alive. In the winter, the fox hunts for mice and rabbits. This fox has discovered a mouse in its tunnel beneath the snow. When the winter is cold and the snow is deep, many animals cannot find food. Here are some ways you can help animals in the winter. But I must say that if you are planning to help any animals during the winter, that you have to keep doing it. It says, please remember, once you begin feeding birds and other wild animals in winter, you must continue. They are depending on the food you supply. So don't start unless you're planning to continue it throughout the whole winter because they will start to depend on you and they won't, they won't look for food on their own because they'll be expecting you to give it to them. So you need to just keep doing it all winter long if you're even going to start. But here are some ideas. You can make a peanut and popcorn garland. You could nail a sunflower head to a fence post. You could hang a suet in a plastic net bag. You can stick fruit and cheese pieces on a dead branch. You can nail a seed tray with drainage holes to a fence post. So on the top of a fence, you could put a tray but with seeds in it, but you want to put holes in it in case it rains. Um, that's some other ideas too. Eventually, the days grow longer. The nights grow shorter. It begins to get warmer. Spring is coming.